Hello and welcome to Charity Chat, the ACNC's podcast. In this episode, we're going to discuss charities and administration costs. It's a topic that often generates lots of opinions from both within the charity sector and from the public more broadly. And we're going to touch on some of the important issues. My name is Matt Crichton and I'm from the education team here at the ACNC. And joining me to talk about this important topic today is the Assistant Commissioner of the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission, making his second appearance on the podcast, Murray Baird. Hello, Murray. Yeah, hello, Matt. Good to be back. Administration costs, as I mentioned in the intro, is, is one that often pops up when people talk about charities and donating to charities. But could you just, just give us a brief overview of what we mean by this term, administration costs? Yes, Matt. I, I suppose all charities are trying to deliver good in the community. We call it public benefit. And there will be a chain of expenses for that final delivery. And uh, so the administrative cost is often separated out as being those things that come before the delivery of the good in the community. But in reality, they're all part and parcel of the same chain. You can't have good in the community unless you prepare to deliver it. And that will involve inevitable expense. Sometimes people regard it as a measure of efficiency to keep the administrative costs low. Uh, But in fact, it's a false level of efficiency. The real question is, is it the best way of delivering the public good? And these costs that are incurred uh, before the ultimate delivery of the public good, they cover a range of aspects of charity operations, don't they? What would be some examples that uh, people often throw into the administration costs basket? Well, the most common uh, statement of administrative costs is fundraising costs. Uh, It's said that uh, they are wasted costs, the cost of fundraising, uh, and the most important thing is the funds that come in and are spent. Right. But of course, again, you don't have any fundraising unless you invest uh, in the fundraising. And so they're an inevitable cost of uh, getting things started, getting the ball rolling uh, to bring the... Uh, resources into the organisation. And of course other administrative costs are often the the office costs. So we think of the receptionist, the telephones, the stationery, uh, the accountants, uh, all as administrative expenses. And we think of those on the front line as the the delivery of the, the public good. Again, you cannot have the front line unless you have the troops backing that up. So I would see them as all part of the delivery of mission. Right, that's a really good point. I think that's one that many people don't immediately um, think about when they're considering this concept of admin costs is, as you mentioned, things such as the phone bill, the internet bill, the the accountants and, and all the people backstage making sure that the show goes uh, goes ahead at the front end. Yeah, well, just this week there was a charity who said, we have a particular campaign and we want to pay the administrative costs of this campaign. And uh, they found that people were prepared to give to the administrative costs because those people realised that you get no outcomes unless you have the inputs and they were oversubscribed. In fact, this charity had to write to those subscribers and say, we've been overwhelmed with people prepared to pay for the administrative costs. Are you prepared for some of that to go to the uh, the ultimate outcome? And people said, of course we are, but we wanted to make sure the administration was met first. Right, sort of flipping the story on its head. <laughs> and and uh, a lot of donors will traditionally say, I only give if 100% goes to the front line. I think that misses the point of a holistic charity. Um, now there's a trend for donors to say, I will only give to the administrative costs so the front line can take place. Right, right. I'm glad you raised that. On this 100% to the cause type thinking, we know that it's pretty prevalent. Um, We see it played out in the public discourse when speaking about charities and assessing how charities are delivering their good works. Is that even possible to deliver 100% of the donations or the funds of a charity to the, as people would consider, the front end cause? I suppose it depends a lot on your definitions. And and we would be concerned if you were misleading people to say there are absolutely no overheads uh, in this final delivery. What is often meant is that we source the administrative costs from another place. So someone else is paying the admin and yes, 100% of your donation will go to the final delivery. Right. But uh, 
I think they should say that. I think it would be better to say, because some generous people have paid for the overheads, we are able to put 100% yeah, of right. your gift to the front line. But to suggest that every dollar goes to the front line, in my view, is misleading. Right. And of course, as you mentioned, you often can't do the front line activity unless you've invested a little bit in the support that goes behind it. Yeah, and it often means that, that there would be no accountability whatsoever if you simply sent uh, $100 of every $100 given to the front line. Who is doing the raising of the funds? Right. Who's doing the accountability to make sure that they're getting through? Right. So you do need the front end administrative costs, as we call them. And naturally, administrative costs are going to be different according to the organisation and the types of activities it carries out and the types of charitable works that it's delivering. But is there a ratio that people can look to to consider charity efficiency with use of administration costs? At the ACNC, we try to avoid ratios uh, because there is such a diversity of charities and the way they do business that we would say every responsible board needs to determine how they spend their funds. For example, if I were raising money for a very popular cause from a small group of wealthy philanthropists, um, I would have low fundraising costs and a lot of it would go to the final cause. But if I were raising money for an unpopular cause to be delivered remotely uh, from a wide range of donors, my fundraising costs would be very high. But the key thing is, Am I keeping the mission in mind? Is something getting through? And is it getting through responsibly and accountably? And presumably this would carry over into paying people to work in the charity, staff salaries as administration costs. Well, in Australia, uh, approximately 44% of all charities operate with volunteers. And that's good. We want to encourage volunteers to make their contribution. On the other hand, the other 56% of charities have paid employees to deliver the services. And of course, it depends on what you're doing, the sustainability of your model. Uh, it may be that volunteers are re ready to sprint for a short time, but eventually they'll come back and say, look, we're pretty tired now. Right. <laughs> um, and we've got other things to do in life. Uh, so that's when you'll be saying, perhaps we should have staff appropriately paid to deliver these services. Either model is valid as long as the board has thought through how can we best deliver public benefit in the community? And it depends on the charity too. I would think that if you were, say, an organisation delivering emergency medical treatment in remote areas, you would want some qualified doctors to be helping deliver those, those services. And, and sometimes those qualified doctors may volunteer for a short eye camp or, or a surgery camp. Yep. But if you wanted people consistently being in a remote area delivering medical uh, good in that community, uh, you would have to remunerate your staff uh, to ensure sustainability and long-term outcomes. And just getting back to this idea of ratio again, but in the context of staff salaries, is there a limit on what charities can pay their staff, given that they are charities? Again, every board has to work out how they best fulfil their mission. When we would become concerned is where we think that the salaries are at such a level that something else is going on here. That this is in fact a way or is an independent purpose of making money for those involved. Staff are, are entitled to be paid a fair salary for the work they do. Uh, but if it goes over what is reasonable, we say, oh, well, you're probably creaming off a profit here or something else is going on. So that's where we would draw the line. Again, it is not a question of ratios. It's a question of looking at the staff salary and saying, is this reasonable in all the circumstances of this charity? So there is no one size fits all approach to looking at this sort of thing, staff salary or, or admin costs more broadly. It, it really depends on the charity itself and the nature of the work that it's undertaking. Absolutely. But where would we see the danger signs? I think we would see the danger signs where year after year, all that happens is administration and staff being paid. And we ask, well, what public benefit is going on here? Right. And we can't find any. Right. We would call for an explanation. Now, it may be that the charity will say, yeah, we're just getting started. Uh, be patient. Here's our long term plan. We're going to really deliver a great outcome here. Uh, or they might say, fair cop, 
all we've been doing is feeding our own staff yep. and, and that's not good enough and we'd say you either have to improve your model or it's appropriate to come off the register. And what would you say to people that really do look at administration costs as a factor in deciding whether or not to donate to a charity? Is it a fair point on which to make such a decision, do you think? Uh, no, I don't think it is. Firstly, the accounting standards and arrangements mean that you can put administrative costs in all sorts of different baskets and you can create the answers you want if you are a charity. And you can do that honestly, uh, just depending on which basket you put them in. So don't assume that you are comparing uh, uh, apples with apples. You could well be comparing uh, apples with avocados when you are looking at those baskets. Um, and secondly, uh, I talked about the diversity of charities. If they're delivering a different public good in different circumstances, of course the ratios will be different. And so if you simply give on the basis of comparison, uh, you will skew uh, those charities that you support. Yeah, some will come out looking far better than others just simply because of the types of activities that they do. Yeah, and I think the assessment of public good uh, is not something that is easy to measure uh, in dollars and numbers. It will depend on me as a donor what I see my values are for uh, ultimate delivery of good. I think that's a really good point to end on and we have just about run out of time for this episode. Murray, thank you again for joining us to discuss such an interesting topic and I think there's so much more to this topic that we can explore that we'll have to get you back for a sequel coming up. Thanks very much, Matt. I look forward to it. Thanks again. Be sure to check out other episodes of ACNC Charity Chat and other resources including guides, fact sheets and webinars on our website at acnc.gov.au. And if you enjoyed this podcast and would like to hear more, subscribe on iTunes or wherever you happen to access it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.